I'm not ready. Not ready for fall. Why do I... Dude, stop. No, no music. The mums are out. I still have like six weeks of summer left. Why does everybody do this? <sighs> well, it is what it is. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Friday. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. It's early, and I'm at Lowe's. Just popped in to grab some gravel and a little bit of mulch to work on some flower beds, and they got the fall stuff. Lots of fall stuff. Oh, the rutabagias are kind of cute, though. I don't know. Do I need to do fall planters this year? I did them last year. They didn't get a lot of views. Do you guys want me to do some? I will. Those are one of the few planters that when I do those, it's mostly exclusively for the YouTube. I don't usually do a lot of fall planters otherwise. I enjoy the fall planters. I think they're pretty and everything. It's just, um, it gets really hard around here to find really nice looking plants to use that time of year. The nurseries clearance out a lot of their, um, like annuals and things. And there just isn't usually a lot of great selection left <laughs> by the time it's come around to doing fall planters but I mean there's a decent selection out right now like a good selection of things that would work but um otherwise it turns into just like kale and cabbage and mums and things like that which is cute I usually like to diversify a little bit more than that Ooh, see some pretty hot biscuits I'm happy they're still getting some of these things in so that's kind of surprising <laughs> I was gonna be getting gravel and mulch but can't find a flatbed, so have to make this little garden cart work. I think I cut it out of the last vlog, but I was here to get a bunch of stuff and couldn't find a cart, so just left, basically. I walked around for a while and nothing ever showed up. Look at this laurel. This is the Etna English laurel. Look at the foliage. That is awesome foliage. Beautiful. A stunning evergreen shrub with bronze orange new growth in spring. Oh, that's cute. Six by eight by six by eight, slow, hardy negative ten, so a zone six B ish plant. Those are adorable. Yeah. Got a few bags of rock, so at least I can get some stuff done. And then just a just a few plants. The Wigellas were things I had planned on getting. So it's, there were only two impulse buys. Not too bad. Typically, not a great thing to do with plants, right? Want to read up on them? But I was like, these are so perfect. I'm going to grab a couple of them now, do some reading, hold on to the receipt. They're not going to work the way I want them to. I'll take them back. No big deal. And um, if they turn out to be as perfect as I'm hoping they are, then I'll get some more. You know, it's always just whatever it takes to justify the plant purchases. I'm fine with it. No big deal. I love this thing so much. I've talked about it before, but not in a while. It's a dolly, folds into a cart. Use it for everything. So right now, I'm working on this bed over here. It's not gonna be like a drastic transformation. I don't even think I'm gonna plant anything up in it, but I need to go through and regrade it, dig out. This is all drainage that leads down to a drain that's down here, behind that orchid stand. And it's the, the whole area retains too much moisture. That's been a problem for years, but since I'm really going to have to kind of like dig up this entire area next year and regrade it. I don't want to do anything too drastic, but I need to at least tidy this up. And you can see I've had the sprinklers off over here for a while. That's what happened to this poor way in tanna tree. I went and I lifted it up a little bit higher, but like there's still moisture seeping out of the ground. And it hasn't rained in days. Now it's supposed to rain sometime soon. And then I think for like the next day or so, but that's a good time to get the gravel down. So it'll help wash all the dust and everything off of it. That's what I figure. So yeah, like I said, no drastic transformations. It's an area that's been getting way too wet. Like look at that poor alakasha back there. It's got way too wet. I moved it back where it'll hopefully stay sheltered from the rain a little bit more. Same thing with that sago palm. So I'm just gonna dig this up and throw some rock down. Does that sound like fun, Tobes? Does that sound like fun, baby Toby? You such a good boy. Y'all wet? You were just swimming, weren't you? Yeah, good boy. Probably should have said this at the beginning of the vlog. There's like no direction this week. Just kind of be kind of doing some little odd and end things. People can, y'all want to hang out? That'll be fun. We will see. So see over here, it's hard to see angles and things like that with the camera. But things are too heavily sloped here. They have been for years. That's why I was saying I need to like regrade this next year. So it's almost, it's hard to tell, but there's almost a straight drop off. 
right here. So I still have two bags left so that I can, when it's a little bit cooler out, I'll come out and move everything back and get this to be a little bit more gentle of a slope, and then the rock will sit more evenly. Now, regardless of whether or not there had been like a little miniature mudslide in there, this had to be done anyways. You have to do it every few years because over time, mud and whatnot starts to get kind of clogged up in the gravel, and you sort of have to turn it over, give it a rinse, and you can pull old gravel down, and then I like to put a few bags of fresh gravel in, or in this case, just <laughs> all new fresh gravel. It was only, um six bags which isn't too bad and I went a little bit heavy in spots you know so I'm gonna do a little bit more tidying with it but I'm just glad to have that done I like having cleaner lines in here and so you can see where the gravel comes out over the patio that's where I need to work on the slope and everything a little bit more so that it's not pulling forward but by having more gravel along the front here that's gonna kind of create sort of like a catch for mud and whatnot that wants to escape Start my hand. I'm trying to point out what I'm talking about here, so hopefully that's not too much hand for you. Yeah, that looks much better. Nice clean lines. Like I said, not a drastic transformation over here. The lantana, it got too much water and then I let it dry out and I'm starting to see signs of new growth in here, so I think it's going to be okay. I was a little bit worried about it. It was like a $5 or $3 clearance plant, but still, I mean, don't want to just let it die. That doesn't make any sense. So I might go ahead and give that a heavy prune back. And um, maybe I'll lift it out of here. I can't, I need to watch the forecast and see what the rain's going to do. Because I know it's supposed to rain, but I don't know, like, if it's just going to be like, you know, spot storms or what's going on. I don't know how I'm still awake, but I am. Look at how hazy it is. It's been, like, off and on. Oh, that's just, it's just darkness down there. Yeah, it is extremely humid. Look at that. Look how humid it is. Everything's all... I can't keep my lens. My lens keeps fogging over. That's the problem. Yeah. Last night, I went to Hammer's house party, which was uh, two live crew, Tongue Lock, Biz Marquee, Sir mix a -Lot, MC Hammer. There was someone else there. It was a real good time. But I was out kind of late. I got home. The people I went with wanted, they were tired. And I was like, I'm not. And I went out and, yeah, like three hours of sleep. So why I'm so awake, I have no idea. I couldn't vlog the concert, though, because, you know, that music's all copywritten. But I did put a lot of it on my story just so I could put it on my highlights on my page on Instagram. So if you want to see, you can check it out there. It's not, like, good quality video or anything, but it was a really good time. Now, Hammer, he's, like, 55, 56. He was up there dancing and doing his thing. People in their 30s talking about getting old. We all need to shut up with that mess. Anyways, <laughs> I was sitting down on the other end. This light, a bunch of the lights had been out on it. Let me get closer so you can see what I'm talking about. Hopefully, kind of. Uh, I got three bulbs changed. Those screws are stripped on the other two. You know, I put this limelight hydrangea here so it would be reflective and bright at night. I think I probably should have gone with like a bobo or a strawberry vanilla. Because the limelight is still like a little bit too green. And look at how... This one's not adjusting well at all. I barely mess with its roots or anything when I repotted it. That doesn't happen very often. So I'm just going to call that a fluke. I'm going to take it back, though. So it's only had it for like three or four days. And there's no reason it should be doing that. It's potted up. Same as that one. Doesn't matter. It's not really giving me the reflection I wanted. Anyways, I thought I should point that out now while it's nighttime instead of during the day when you won't really be able to see what I'm saying. It's still beautiful, and I think they're lovely. But, like, look at the strawberry vanillas. You can't see them very well from here, but look at how bright they are, and they're far away. Like, really, well, that's still in the way. Yeah, like, you see the pops of white, that reflection, and they, they're they fading to pink. Still much brighter than the, the green ones. Or maybe the white fades to green. I can't remember. I I don't remember. I, I don't know. I guess I'll go to bed. I'll pick things back up in the morning. Um, what are you doing? What are you doing in here? Yeah, hi. Huh? Yeah, what are you doing? Go back to your cage. Go to your room. Go on. Go on. <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to be out here. What are you doing? What are you doing? That's dangerous. At bedtime, Pumpkin hops on my shoulder, and she rides upstairs with me. I'm covering up her butthole, if you're wondering why my hand's there. Lincoln. Oh, that was right in my eyeball. Lincoln, you ready for bed? Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> you think it might be kind of humid outside? You say good morning, pumpkin. Yay, good girl. Oh, barf. Oh, open the door and it's just like wet air. Oh, gross. Hot, wet air. Are you gonna come out? What you go potty? Tuck. Tucker, what, what's that about? What were you doing? What were you doing? Yeah, what, what's up with you, huh? Where'd you go? Okay, you can go out. You're free. Go on. Okay. It literally, is, it feels like standing outside of like a steam room. Oh, oh, oh. Well, it's some nice weather for the Vander Roots, though. Get that high humidity keeping things green. <laughs> My lens keeps fogging over. I keep having to wipe it off. <laughs> it feels so gross out here. There we go. Been having some issues with the electrical on the setup. I don't. I thought it was the lights. That's why I didn't end up linking them in the description of the last video where I set all this stuff up. But. I think it was actually a cord. I swapped out an extension cord and I don't know, I'm gonna give it a couple hours to run, make sure the GFCI doesn't go off and then I'll try plugging the lights in and see if that has anything to do with it. But it shouldn't because I haven't been able to get things to stay on for more than like 10 minutes probably the last couple of days. It ran fine for like three days. Then I came out and the GFCI had tripped and one of the, look at how this poor Hyacinth got all dehydrated from this being off overnight when the the breaker tripped on it not the breaker the gfci thing i guess that's like an internal breaker though isn't it yeah anyways i think maybe i have that problem solved i don't know gonna wait and see but i hope so and if it is then i'll go through and put those lights in the description but i want to give this several days make sure everything's working out right it's be like 95 to 100 today i can't remember so it's not a day for planting, that's for sure. Otherwise, everything over here is okay. The water lily has lots of pads shooting up on it. The lotus, the little bud that's on there is getting bigger and bigger. They're all kind of reaching a little bit though, so it's something I have to keep an eye on. It hasn't been really, really sunny since I set everything up over here. It's been a lot of overcast, so I'm hoping that that will change. If not, then I'll probably just have to move this guy over here because it it's much more sunny, just like a few feet over. There's more sun. So that's something I've just got to watch out for. Somebody asked me about the stagnant water and mosquitoes. I have been using the mosquito bit granules. I think I might have a bad batch or maybe they're expired or maybe they're exposed to too much heat. I don't know. But I've put a lot in here. You're only supposed to use like a teaspoon of these granules for every like 25 square feet of surface area. That's just the surface area of the water. This is not 25 square feet, that's for sure. And there's probably, at this point, I've probably put in maybe a quarter cup. So multiple tablespoons of the stuff. And there's still some larvae wiggling around in here. So I'm going to give it a couple more days. And then if that's still going on, I'm going to do like a 50% water change in here uh, to just help keep the water moving, to help kill some of them off. And then I'll just, I'll buy a new package and just try the mosquito dunks. And hopefully that will work. I've never really had that problem before, but... I, you know, sometimes I got the bits off of Amazon and, you know, Amazon ain't quite what it used to be, right? It's kind of turning into a glorified wish and just my opinion with certain things. Like when I was shopping for the lights for this fountain, I mean, uh, it was ridiculous. Every single light was like a no name or a fake name. Cause you know, you can, there are companies that manufacture products in mass and you can contact them there in China and just pay them to have your name, your logo put on that product and boom, that's your brand of light. And uh, you can get all these things brought over to the US, drop shipped and be an Amazon seller and sell them. And it's the same, I went ahead and I cross checked a lot of the lights I was finding. I've wanted to do like a light review, an outdoor lighting review from lights from Amazon. And I had a lot of trouble, like a lot of trouble to the point where I ended up just scrapping the video finding lights on Amazon that I couldn't also just find on Wish for half the price. So that, that's just like, I'm not gonna review just junk. You know what I mean? It's mostly when it comes to like these pond lights and outdoor lighting, that's where I've been seeing it a lot where I'm just like, well, I, 
why am I gonna spend twenty dollars on this light on Amazon when I can get it from Wish for twenty bucks? I don't really order things from Wish because you know there's some controversy and just some things to keep in mind when it comes to labor and whatnot. But if the stuff's being bought from those same manufacturers, whether it's through AliExpress or Alibaba, however people are getting them over here and drop shipped over, it's the same difference, but paying twice as much. So I'm just like, eh. Gonna have to figure something else out with that video. Unless you guys want me to test out junk lighting, and then I'd be happy to. It'll just be me talking about how terrible they are. <laughs> but that'd be, that could be entertaining and fun. I don't know if that's the case with the lights that I got, though, because everything seems to be fine now, so I don't... It's possible that after the... It ran for, like, a good one or two days before it started being a problem, so maybe what happened is there could be something wrong with those lights, like maybe they caused some sort of short in the old extension cord. I don't know. Doesn't really seem likely to short out an entire cord and part of the prongs on the outlet from a couple very, very, very weak low voltage lights, but maybe. My goodness, that cicada was talking back, wasn't it? I forgot to update when I pulled the, um, who, what was in here? Oh, the Song of India. I forgot to update. I did, I replaced that with a daisy. I can't, it's one of the African daisies. Osteospermum. I can't remember the variety, but it has purple flowers on it. I think that that will go well in here. Man. They're loud today. The clouds are moving so fast. Almost looks like a time lapse, and I'm not even time lapsing. I probably should be though, huh? The thing is, if you look down there, it's just gray skies. Maybe even rain, so probably wouldn't be a great idea to set up a time lapse, but looks really cool right here where there's some blue showing through. All right, I've just spent way more time than I should admit to just sitting back and watching the clouds. But it's like nature turned on its lava lamp today. Do you see? Let me hear. Look. There's just so much movement and detail that it's, I'm kind of, I'm mem <laughs> mesmerized. I also just woke up. It's the next day. It was too hot yesterday. Yesterday was canceled. I was like, nope, not doing it wasn't even necessarily the heat. It, well, I mean, it was, it was like 98 degrees, but the humidity, oh my goodness, it was just blah, blah, blah. It did eventually get better. It went down to like 80% humidity eventually, but I was like, I'm not, no, not today. Still like hung out outside, but it was too much for the cameras and everything. I was like, I'm just, it's, it's gonna be a fun, chill day. Not doing anything that requires much movement. I introduce you guys to the new fan. Fan chair's gone. Fan chair's moved on. And this is new fan. Doesn't get a fun name because it's not just sitting on a chair. Works okay. It's a lot cheaper than the other one, which is fine. It's loud. That's to be expected. Oscillates. Has misters on it. It works well. It makes being outside much more bearable. So does the pool. But, you know, the pool is like... I can't really do much vlogging from inside the pool, you know, because water. I was just sitting down out here getting ready to film a video and realized I don't have all the materials I need. I just need some gravel, nothing extreme, but thought I'm going to go ahead and run to Lowe's and see what they have there. This is, it's kind of a last minute thing, but I needed to get this done because that means that just, come on now, that looks terrible, right? I know, we've been all over the place. I think I told you in the beginning, this vlog this weekend, it's, <laughs> no direction, none at all. Just going with the flow of things. It's a week of audits and ends. Look what Toby did to me. You probably don't want to see that. Me and Toby were playing and he really scratched me up pretty good. He's got some very sharp little talons on him. Well, hey, bite. How you doing? You look awfully cozy. Gotta love that zoom. So grainy, you good boy. You such a good girl. I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna, yep, okay, love you too. Hi, Toby. <laughs> you good boy. Look at what's going on here. I was walking past and I was like, Azalea. Just like at first glance, and I saw the tag and I was like, huh? Wait, what? Just because like the woody structure inside made me think Azalea, but then I opened the tag and this is a paniculata. Now, paniculatas typically have a, well, panicle-shaped bloom comes out kind of like a upside-down cone. But this, in the picture, looks like it has round flowers. That's very unusual, or round flower clusters. And I'm digging through. It doesn't look like any of them are still in bloom, but I can see old spent flowers, and they're round. 
So that's pretty interesting, right? Because the paniculators are really tough hydrangeas that can take a lot of sun. And I think that would be so interesting for them to still have that round, ball-shaped flower cluster on it. Because that's what's more typical on something like, you know, these blue enchanted hydrangeas, the macrophyllas. It's very cute, very pretty. I don't know, I'm just, I'm very intrigued. The problem though is that these are pretty much all bloomed out. There's some that still have some tiny buds on them, you can see back there, but I don't know if I'm curious and intrigued enough to get one and wait an entire year. I can just, I'll just Google it and see what I think. Okay, <laughs> obviously I'm home. Let's get ready to edit Fern Friday, and this little guy will not let go of my screen. He's really hanging on there, like, the, kind of getting on my nerves. You tell him, like, you can't sit with us, go away. I hope it's not hurt. Sometimes bugs get blown through the fan and they, it's a touch screen. How am I supposed to do this? Would you just go, well, don't. Okay, I'm gonna save you. Don't you dare bite me though. I see your little chompers growing. Oh, oh <laughs> it's gone. Oh, but, oh, oh, where'd it go? Oh, by the way, look. That's done. Well, that video's been out, so it's, you already know. Hopefully you've seen it. You know, I'm always forgetting that there's a light on the camera, but really, it doesn't help very much, does it? Like, that doesn't... I don't think that looks any better, does it? No, not really. Good morning, Charlie. Don't see you down here very often. Is it your friend again? Yeah. Well, I was going to go for a quick run at the park, but I have a feeling the park's probably closed. It's weird, it's smoking from right there and from all the way over there. I wonder what's going on. Isn't that landscaping over here kind of cute? See how that, you can't see that. You can see that though. Isn't it pretty? They're like little prairie style things mixing in some natives with the grasses and whatnot, which is fitting for this little area. Well. The gates close, but there's cars here. Either way, I don't really think I want to be running when my allergies are already really bad when there's all that smoke in the air. I wonder what's going on. It does actually look like it might be kind of far away. That could be on the other side of the river. The Missouri River's like, I don't know, a mile or two? Not even probably on the other side of those trees. This is like a levee here. I know, no one cares. We can just add this to the list of random things that make absolutely no sense in this vlog. Well, I guess I'll swim instead. The water's a little bit chilly, but make it work. Oh, and this is River's Edge Park. If anyone's in St. Louis and like, you like a cute little park, it's got a little trail that goes around a big old pond. I don't know if it's big enough to call it a lake. And neat little things, but it's put together fairly nicely. And it's kind of like a natural track. That's why I like it, because it's easier to gauge how far you're running without having to like wear a watch or download an app or anything like that. Oh, and it is a gorgeous, absolutely stunning day. But that's also 75 degrees. That's why the pool's a little bit cold. But I can suck it up and deal with that. It's not the end of the world. This guy's really cool too. I like the cute little, I like flat bottom clouds. Don't know why. They've always been my favorite. I think they remind me of the clouds from any time I've been on vacation, especially as a child, where once you get south of Missouri into, like, Mississippi, when you're driving down south to get to the coast, everything gets really flat, and then you can see the clouds for really, really stretched out distance. And I was always mesmerized by that as a kid, because I was like, whoa, there's so much sky. Look how far it goes. And the same thing when you get to the ocean. You know, the clouds coming up over the water. Looks really neat. That smoke's stretching really far. Uh, I had a dream last night that I guess I was on a family vacation. Those details are a little bit blurry and foggy to me. But the thing, part I remember is what was terrifying is that I was like sitting out on the little balcony space on the vacation. It was overlooking like a lake and there were mountains on the other side of the lake and one of the mountains just went poof, exploded. And it was a bunch of volcanoes erupting and started getting closer and closer and closer. It's 
very bizarre. Never had a dream like that. Never really been like afraid of volcanoes. Not really something you have to worry about in Missouri. But you know, there's more random things for you. I almost went by Home Depot because all the stuff I've been doing with the gravel and everything, it has me thinking of a project I might like to do, but I think it'd be better to go home and talk about that first. Oh my gosh, we can do something gardening related. That might be fun. Or at least talk about it and do some brainstorming. Did you guys watch the ostrich fern video? Was it good? I was kind of thinking I probably should have pruned out all the dead stuff before I filmed the video, but I had the footage that I've been, every single time I filmed these ostrich ferns from like spring till now, whenever they were in a vlog, I was like, I need to make sure I remember where this is so I can use it when I do the ostrich fern video. So it was kind of like I wanted both of those things to, I don't know. I think it's okay. Persephone's falling down. Seems to just sort of be what they do when they're about done blooming. I'm leaving them on though because they're forming seed heads, which isn't totally necessary with these. Man, the ants. Oh, there's so many ants. Uh, because these offshoot like crazy. I mean, they're just constantly putting up little babies. More little Persephone's, more little crinamolies are always coming up off these guys. So, yeah, probably not necessary to save the seeds, but I thought I'd give it a shot. So here's what I was thinking. This corner back here, underneath this bay window in the kitchen, this is like kind of the spot where plants have always gone to die. It's just something about the area just sucks. That's why I usually use it to like store tropicals or whatnot that I'm not really doing anything with. And last year and the year before I did like a pretty display over here. And uh, I'm trying, I want to work with more perennials because I'm running out of space for the tropicals, you know? So I have my needle palms and stuff over here and I think those are going to end up actually going around the magnolia right here. But anyways, the whole point of this is that I have always wanted to do a very simple rock garden or Japanese style something back here. But the problem is, like, it just doesn't really fit with anything else, and that's always why I haven't done that. But the realization I had, which is just fantastic, and I can thank all of you for this realization, is that with the YouTube channel, I can totally justify having random spots in my garden that don't match up with anything else but have a theme to them. Right? I think so. That shouldn't even matter. People should just do whatever the heck they want to, but it's just one of those things where it's like, how come... You have, you know, like all this over here and then it's like something totally random. It's for the YouTube, right? It's for you guys. I, I just, I feel fantastic about that. Because it would be interrupting the flow of everything else, but everything else is like slowly being redone. These garden beds are being redone over the next few years. I and mean, it's just, it's a slow process. So that's kind of what I was thinking for this area because I mean, this just looks terrible. This sand cherry back here. It might be a plum. I can't remember. It's got to go. There's tons of dead lace vine in here. Well, the bottom portions are dead. It's growing all the way up into the magnolia, so that's got to come out. It's just, it's a very dark area. Years ago, this was actually filled with Akubas, J Akuba japonica. Uh, Mr. Goldstrike was the variety. This is a long time ago, and it was absolutely just gorgeous and beautiful. But as the magnolia grew and started to shade it a little bit more, they weren't doing as well. And uh, it just didn't work out for them, which is odd because they prefer more shade than the sun. But it's just the climate, everything over here just changed for them. So, and there's still one back here that I refuse to dig up, but it has taken to be more of a ground cover. It fell over one winter and it was like, I'm just going to keep growing this way on the ground. And I'm like, all right, you, you do you. So, yeah. That's what I'm thinking for this area. This has been a spot that has been bugging me for a while. I don't really have anywhere else to put the hose reel. I could maybe find a different spot. That's like a yard waste barrel for all the leaves in the pool. I could start keeping those the pool cleaning materials somewhere else probably. Kind of nice having them right there, but it's an eyesore. So is that trash can. Anyways, what I was thinking would be to clear this spot out, get it nice and tidy, nice and clean, get that sand cherry out of there, and like all the plants gone, level it out. It's hard to plant in here because this area that's, well, this area, the ground is full of pipes. So many pipes that go from the drainage from the gutters, from the sprinklers, from pool equipment. It is just pipes everywhere. So it's really hard to dig here. 
So it would be an ideal spot to get it leveled out and clean. And I was thinking about doing like a dark ring of rock and then something lighter in the middle. It has to be really, really on top of making sure leaves and things stay cleaned out of it because if you don't, you know, that breaks down over time and it builds up and doesn't look good. So it'll be a little bit of maintenance, but I think as long as I use a thick enough layer of rock and the right size of gravel, I can be able to blow a lot of the leaves out that fall in there. I just think that would look nice. Obviously, this is not set up to look nice right now, so don't be judging me on that. This is just where things that fit over here that need like a little bit of afternoon sun, but mostly shade, or really just a little bit of sun, not afternoon sun. Like the aphalandra back there, it's just doing fantastic. I need to repot that. Don't let me, guys, don't let me forget, I need to repot this. It's very important. The clock's ticking. Need to get that done, because it's still in a tiny pot, and that thing, oh, it's gonna be hard to keep that hydrated this winter if I don't bump it up a size. So yeah, that was my thought here. Just doing something very simple with some rock, maybe a simple pot in the middle with some sort of like little spruce or juniper or something in there. Probably not this pot, something different. I don't know. It's just an idea I'm playing around with and it really won't go with the rest of the garden, but I've decided I don't, I don't care. If I still get to have my pretty spot of the thing I've always wanted to have, I'm probably going to do it anyways. And with it being in this corner, that might work out okay because it's going to break up like this planting bed a little bit from this planting bed over here, which, I mean, typically you'd want those to flow together. But since it's almost in the middle of those two spots, I think it would be okay as long as this bed and then this bed over here, as long as those still go together for the most part should work out and still kind of like have a flow. You know what I'm saying? And there's a drain right here that is just impossible to keep clean because all the mulch and everything that's up here is always getting flushed down. So I'm always having to clean it out. If I were to just gravel this entire area, that wouldn't be as big of an issue. I, I think I would like that. That's That would be much, much, much better. So that's what that was all about. Over here, I'm doing some stuff with some fertilizer. Now, this is kind of loud, isn't it? Well, I'll just stand back a little ways. So somebody did ask me to be a little bit more thorough in my explanation with this. If you don't know, it was in a vlog a few weeks ago. This is what I do for like bulk fertilizing when I'm not doing something that really is applicable to use like a hose and sprayer for. It's just a 44 gallon brute rubber made with a wheel kit. It's just like a, it's just wheels. It just snap onto the bottom. That's all that is. A little bit pricey. There's probably other brands that you can find nowadays that are cheaper than this setup, but it's just a trash can with wheels on it, okay? And then the pump is like a hydroponic pump I got off of Amazon, and it's hooked to tubing that fits on there. And I measure things out appropriately. It's a 44-gallon barrel, so it's more for when I'm doing homemade-type fertilizers, like a compost tea or like my beer fertilizer, which I can, I can talk about that a little bit maybe in a different video. And then as far as how to use it, that just depends on what fertilizer you're using in it, really. So have to follow the directions on that. But that's all it is. It's just trash can, wheels, pump and tubing. Very simple. And I use a clamp to help keep the hose in there. I don't use the hose that often for watering. Usually I'll dump a bucket inside of this or I'll dump a watering can in it because it's a little bit easier to keep things measured. With pumps, you know, the pump in there is rated, I think, 1,200 gallons per hour, but the more you work with the hose, you pull the hose really far away or you elevate the hose really far in another direction, then you lose flow. So it's really hard to calculate that, and it's usually not necessary to use a ton of gallons per plant, you know, so it's easier just to use a bucket or a waste can. What's it? Not a waste can. A watering can. Oh, look, the sweet potato vine's blooming. It's not typically why anybody grows these. It's all about foliage, but that is a very pretty flower. I had mentioned in, uh, well, not Friend Friday, the video where I pot up those sense of areas that are on my umbrella with these Tillandsias. These are the cyanide, the pink quill Tillandsias that I would do something with these in the vlog. But the problem is I'm like a little bit confused about what I want to do. I was just going to pot them all up together, maybe cut the flowers off. They don't need to keep those flowers on them anymore. They're done. They're ooh, normally pink and they bloom from the bottom all the way to the top. And once those last flowers come out the top, the flower's done. So could cut that off on all of them and 
let the plant use its energy to produce its offsets, which you can see. There's an offset coming up there on that one, and then there's one, two, uh, three coming up on that one, and so forth. You can see them in there, all the little offsets. So that way, like I just said, they can use their energy to produce their little Tillandsia babies. See, the problem is I can't decide if I want to just pot them up together or mount them. I think it would look kind of cool to mount them up together. The thing is, I have more than this. I think I have at least three more to go with all these. So it'd have to be a pretty big slab of wood. So I'm not sure what direction I want to go. Because, see, they don't really, they don't need to be in a potting medium, really. They can grow just fine mounted on something as long as there's enough moss packed around everything to get the roots anchoring in. So, I don't know. Let me know what you think, and that's what I will end up doing. I also don't want to take on, like, any projects at this point in the vlog because there's been no direction so far so why start now that's just that's that would be weird i think there's a frog in here there were just bubbles coming up and i swear there was something looking at me wouldn't be surprising there's frogs everywhere out here see how close the lotus is to blooming it's almost there i thought today might be the day but also maybe not because it's just kind of been sitting like this all day long Hopefully soon. Not in this video, though. Probably be in next weekend, so. Yeah, let me know about that, and I will do that. Until then, I'm going to keep these in a spot where they'll get a little bit of morning sun, and they're going to get hit by my misters so that they stay nice and moist. The Sane Talensias, they don't have to be, like, wet, wet. Actually, I've noticed they do just fine. They can go pretty dry, actually. But they seem to do okay either way, as long as there's airflow around them. If it's going to be wet and humid, they're fine with that. They grow a little bit faster, the foliage looks nicer on them. But they can dry out a little bit too. That's one of the things I like around them. They're a very versatile Tillandsia. Oh, I guess that's kind of the rule with most Tillandsias, isn't it? A lot of them can kind of be kept wet or dry. It really just depends on airflow so that they don't end up rotting. I've had a fair number of people ask me to do a fertilizer video, and I haven't done one yet because, I, you know, I like to be kind of thorough with things, right? Like, I don't just do a plant spotlight and it's like four minutes done. I like to kind of dive in sort of deep with things. And with fertilizer, I feel like there's a lot more to talk about than just the values, the NPK and whatnot. Like, I just... I want to be thorough. I can't really recommend brands or anything like that because the subscribers, all everybody who's watching, are all over the world, so not all the products are available to everyone, right? So I'm going to put a pin in that and start working on it. It's going to take me a while because I'm going to have to do, like, computer graphic things because I think really to fully understand fertilizer and fertilizing plants, it's important to understand the nitrogen cycle, nitrifying bacteria, anaerobic and aerobic actions with bacteria and fungus, and there's just, there's a lot more to it, I think, than just making another video that anybody could look up on YouTube that talks about NPK, right? With so many things, if the science is understood behind the basic formula that everybody knows, then it makes it easier to analyze on your own, to look at a package and go, okay, well, I'm seeing these compounds, I'm seeing what this is made out of, and because I understand the nitrogen cycle and the functions of the bacteria and the fungus and what goes on to produce root nodules and things like that, that then I can look at that package and understand, hey, this is either going to work really well or maybe it's garbage. I guess saying garbage is a bit extreme, but you know what I mean. This areca palm has finally flushed out with enough new growth that I can come in and prune out the old, burnt up, dying foliage. I've been looking forward to doing that for a long time. I hate when it's in the background of things and it's so easy to see all those messed up fronds and everything. It's just kind of like I was saying with the Tillandsias, once they reach a certain point, there's no reason to keep that foliage on there. It's not doing anything for the plant. It's not really providing any energy. May as well use whatever energy is being taken from those fronds to encourage new growth. <laughs> Look at all that. A lot of stuff to cut out of there. It looks a little bit bare, but that's all right. It's flushing out lots of new growth. It's responding well to being repotted. Like, what was that? Like a month and a half ago? Probably. I am still on thorough heavy mealybug watch. I'm constantly kind of trying to look down into the nooks and crannies and 
make sure there's nothing in there. At this point though, I have switched over to using peppermint oil and then there's like a cinnamon spray that I've been using and that's working really well topically. And I started doing that not too long ago when I noticed that there were mealybugs on this croton and they didn't look like any of the other mealybugs. I'm mean, hopefully I can't find any to show you. But uh, then if I did, I would at least be able to describe what they looked like. They were, there's different types of mealybugs, right? So I, the other ones I have around are the long tail mealybugs. And I don't think that that's what these were. They were down in here and they were really long and gray. They were gigantic. Uh, I'm not seeing any. And that's a good thing. I'm glad. I sprayed this down with, um, it was a Captain Jack spray and it, it, it smelled like big red chewing gum. I mean, it burns the eyes. It still does. It's been several days. It's been sprayed twice. But there's just so many different areas that it, they could be in here. They have to stay on top of the spraying. So I'll keep doing that. But yeah, no chemicals because, you know, the honeybees trying to be good to the honeybees. Don't want anything that can interfere with them. Not a risk I want to take. Oh, but the point here. This croton gets blazing, intense sun. And I was seeing the mealybugs up. I mean, they prefer new growth, fresh new growth. So that's not shocking. But what's weird is just that I have never had mealybugs on a plant that was getting intense, blazing sun. Because they typically are hiding out like the nooks and crannies far down in the foliage of everything not up in the tips <laughs> right where they're just like getting burned but these i don't know they're mealybug thugs they didn't seem to care yeah now my fingers kind of burn and smell a little bit like cinnamon oh and if any of you have noticed that i have this horrible weedy morning glory vine growing over here and probably wondering like why hasn't he cut that out because it's like one of the few things where i'm consistently seeing honeybees and so I'm just, I'm letting the weed grow because it's the only thing I'm seeing honeybees on so far. I'm just trying to be diligent about making sure that these seed pods up here, see those pods? When those get kind of big, I'm plucking those off. There's some more up there so that they don't spread. I mean, they're going to spread. It's a terrible idea. I should not be doing this. I should not just be allowing a weedy vine to be growing in the garden, but I'm doing it for the bees. They can have it at least for like, another week or two until the lantana flushes out with some new flowers because it's not doing much right now. Oh, I didn't even talk about that. I've seen three honeybees now. There's one that was in last weekend's vlog and I've seen two of them this week. That's a really big deal because they've just, those poor things, they've been missing in action this year. See how big, look at the size of the bloom on this ginger. It's gigantic. I can't reach it. It's too tall, but look at, that's so big. It's beautiful. It smells very nice too, but look at, doesn't that look terrible? I just feel so bad taking away their food. I don't know what to do. And it's not like I don't have other flowers for them. I have zinnias and coreopsis and all kinds of things for them. So I'm probably just being a little bit ridiculous. Yeah, see the lantana tree is not doing much right now. It's resting, but it, I'm thinking it's probably time to go ahead and maybe give it a cut back. Just a small one. But again, I don't want to take anyone's food away, so I might not. Oh, before I forget, let's see here, try and get this tripod set up. Oh, that's a little bit shaky. Maybe I should angle it down a little bit. There we go. I've had multiple comments, mostly from the same person, that I talk too much. So, here you go. Yeah, was that fun? Probably not, but there you go. <laughs> goodness, the things I see in my comments sometimes, my good, it's just like, <laughs> what is going on with people? Doing a quick mealybug check, just cause like they're on my mind now. But so far, so good. All the plants that are neighboring that, why are you so thirsty? Are the drippers not hitting you? That's weird. You don't really look that thirsty. Need a little bit of cleaning up, but hmm. I have to adjust my drippers. Anyway, I'm going to wrap things up. Like I said, at this point in the vlog, I don't want to take on any projects. And my things have been like in short bursts because I've been like struggling with keeping my voice all week. I don't know if Hammer's house party was just too much for my throat. I don't know. Like that sounded very odd and not how I intended it to. But hey, I said in the beginning, this vlog was not going to have a direction. It's just hangout week. 
which is nice sometimes. Sometimes I just need a reset. And that's, that's all this was. I did not plant these here. This is what I'm talking about. These bikini teenies. You want a tough colocasia that's just like a, I mean, it is a plant thug. Try the bikini teeny. They're cold hardy and, I mean, they're basically invasive. If you live somewhere where these actually could be invasive, I would not plant them. They will take over. Oh, there's another honeybee up there. Did you see it? Oh. Oh, there's a whole bunch of them. There's like three of them on here. See? I can't cut this down. They love this plant. There's another one. I mean, it's it's got to stay. Okay, I'm going to count. There's, hold on. Okay, there's a lot of flies on there, so it made it kind of hard to count, but I just counted nine. Morning glory of vines staying. I don't care how terrible it looks. I think I might need to do a little bit of tidying because that's not great for the spindle palm. Like, not at all. Look what it's doing to that frond, but I can't get rid of it. They need it. They, they need this plant. Hey, comment down below. Tell me how ridiculous it is to be keeping this weed in my yard, but it's keeping it anyways. <laughs> Just say hi. Love talking to everybody and hearing from everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. I just cut these back. Look at how big they are already. Social media is linked down below. I use Instagram way more than anything else, like pretty much exclusively at this point. So you can always hit me up on there. And you know, you leave the video a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Makes a big difference for the videos in the channel. So thank you. And subscribe as well. <laughs> hit the notification bell because I upload multiple times a week. During the week, the videos are pretty much plant exclusive. And then on the weekends, it's a vlog and you just never really know what's going to happen. Hence this like 40 something minute mess. I don't even know how long this vlog is so far. I do have actual projects planned for next week though. So there, there will be more substance, I promise. Well, I, it's like this kind of promise. You have to see what happens with life. You never know what's gonna happen, right? Oh, what am I gonna title this video? Nothing specific happened. <laughs> it was funny, when I started editing, I went ahead and just like pulled things into the Adobe Premiere and you have to put a title and I just typed in, IDK vlog, I don't know vlog, and it was like, nope, you've already used this title. And I was like, okay, how about I don't know vlog too? Nope, already been used. So I'm like, oh, not the first time that this has happened. Not surprising. I mean, you know, that's 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 the way things go. I hope everyone's doing well, having a great day, great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.